Awesome. So today, Kate and I are going to dive into talking about just competing, whether it's CrossFit or recreational sports, triathlons, kind of the benefits of competing, and then also some of the drawbacks and and maybe give some tips on just how to uh, kind of navigate that, when to pull back, when to attack something, and, and when things maybe become unhealthy after they were healthy for a period of time. Um, we have the Open coming up soon, so we thought this is a great time to talk about competing. And <clears throat> I love I love the Open. I think it is a, uh, a great event every year, and I want to try and blow up the open this year with the gym and get a ton of people to participate. And, uh, it's a ton of fun. It's really fun to push yourself through. Now it's only three workouts, which I like what was happening in in years past when it was five and even six early on. Uh, a lot of people would have a travel weekend or something would come up and, you know, somewhere around the third or fourth week, they would, uh, they drop out or they'd miss a workout and they wouldn't complete it. And, and now that it's three, most people who commit to that, they can, they can get that in. Or if they do travel, they can go jump into another gym and, and get that done. And, uh, I think I've done, there might've, I think there's been 11 or 12. I think I've done nine out of those opens. Some other years I was, I had a different focus or I was a little bit injured and, um, you've done most of the opens. I think you, you took some years off with like your eye surgery and stuff like that, but you know, I think what we wanted to talk about is I think what is so awesome about CrossFit and what's good about it is the competitive aspect. It's what pushes you. It leaves you feeling with a a certain level of achievement, even just scoring a workout or doing, you know, hitting a PR, doing better than you did before, rather than just kind of maneuvering around a gym. Um, But it's also what's bad about it where people will, you know, they're really neurotic about a leaderboard. They're, they're hyper competitive with everyone around them. Um, you know, occasionally you'll see those people who would, uh, you know, you could tell they would wish the person next to them would trip and fall so they could win. Mm-hmm. Uh, we all kind of know people like that. And, and it's, that's part of sports in general and, and CrossFit kind of blurs the line of, of, uh, sports and an exercise program. So it's, it's, a very unique thing in that there is a sport CrossFit and then there's also a training program that that's CrossFit and sometimes it gets blurred. And I think what, what is cool now is you've started to see it fork in the beginning. It was a training program. They did have the games even when I first got into it, but it was a very small thing. Like, you know, it was just out at the ranch. Um, one of the years, I think right when I first got into it, it was like anyone could just show up and do it. And then, uh, they did have like an an initial qualifier, like in 2009, but the sport wasn't when people came into the gym, most people's aspirations or, or the sport wasn't even on their radar. They were just trying to get fit and in shape. And, uh, somewhere, you know, right around like 2013, everyone who was coming in was seeing the sport on TV and they were getting into it. And then right in that 2014 to I, I feel like 16, 17 era, every gym was sort of modeling their training program around getting people um, good at the sport. And uh, that's where I think a lot of the, the negativity towards CrossFit started coming in. Maybe people were getting banged up. You know, you've got someone who's 50 pounds overweight and they're 45 years old. And they're trying to do butterfly kipping pull-ups and they're getting slap tears in their shoulder. And that's where the, you know, that's where I feel like that started to um, kind of not be a healthy thing, maybe just in CrossFit in general. And then I think now there's a good separation. The the sport's pretty professional now. So people who want to compete in the sport, not necessarily even at the high end, they know that that's a different thing than going to class. Um, I think that's just a good way to maybe start this and and wrap, wrap our head around like the good, bad, and ugly of, of competing in CrossFit and and the sport of it. Um, I know we, we talked about, uh, you know, I was, we were, we were having this discussion. That's why I want to talk about it this week. Um, 
where uh, I was even talking about like when I competed in the earlier days of the uh, CrossFit games, it was a really impactful, important part of my life that I look back with a lot of really good memories. But if I had even tried to compete one more year at the level that I was trying to, it would have turned negative pretty fast. And it was like the writing was on the wall where, you know, whether it was the injuries or just spreading myself too thin. And I think that's where, you know, we talk about, we'll see people as they age, they'll have trouble pivoting. pivoting. Yeah. Like coming up with a new identity, mm-hmm. like, well, if I'm not only training to be at the highest level of a sport, it could be triathlon. You know, we know people with like a triathlon or running background or, or swimming or, or whatever it is. It's either all or nothing. And I just stop. Yeah. And I think that's what we, but I think most people that do their first triathlon, they're not expecting to go in and win it. Sure. And I feel like that's the, the disconnect, at least in the past, I think people are starting to understand now where like, if, if you're going to, if you're starting to get a little better at CrossFit, I think people used to think they're just going to come in and win it all. Like I've never done a five, I've done a ton of five Ks. I've never once thought I would win any of them. And I didn't, <laughs> you know, cause there's other runners that were much faster than me there, but it wasn't that I didn't try my hardest and it wasn't unmotivating to me. I would just compare me against me. Yep. So I think that's, that's kind of the, where I'm coming from and where I think it's a healthy way to compete in anything really is just to always improve upon yourself. And then when you reach a certain age to, to, to then change your focus, to keep competing, you're not going to always see new PRs. You're probably not going to keep improving in every area, but think about feeling a little better all the time. Mm-hmm. So, you know, when we are younger, we push too many, like push workouts too hard, push the partying too hard now just to kind of moderate everything to, and then, you know, bring in the mind piece, all that, where you just feel better all the time. So I've just for like 10, 15 years of my life, I probably just walked around feeling like total shit, (laughs) just so tired from working out. So when I was doing shows, just exhausted two a days, then I, I, you know, transitioned into, um, it was first like half marathons, triathlons, um, that sort of thing. And just would be exhausted, like overtraining. And then I started doing the same thing with CrossFit. And, you know, then I just was at a point where like, I want to just feel good. I want to have energy to do normal life and feel good. And, mm-hmm. and, and want to go dance if, if I'm out with my friends and not just be so tired. I just want to sit there and go to, you know, go home and sit on the couch and fall asleep. So just, feeling better all the time, I think needs to be your focus. And, and, you know, that's better mentally, physically, the whole nine. I think so. What what you've done a good job of in the last, I don't know, it's been a while is you find goals and things to compete in throughout the year. So you do use competition in, in, in a much healthier way than you did in the past now or have evolved it. And that's why I wanted to talk about it. Cause you, you've done a good job and, and, and help me learn how to do that as well, where, you know, you'll do say like this year you're training and you want to do the open and, and put up some scores you're proud of and do well and, and, and do that. And, you know, the last couple of years, it was the Arnold pump and run um, where you did really well. You know, you're in like the top three out of, you know, a couple hundred people in the field. You did really, really well. I hate that, that event, but unfortunately I'm decent. You're really good at it. Um <laughs> So yeah, you're very high level at the the Arnold pump and run, or we'll do the, uh, you know, we'll even make gym competitions like the, um, summer shred, like the 5k. And it's like, okay, try and get this into, it might not even necessarily be a PR time, but there's like, there's a range we like to get into. It's like, you know, for me, if I can crack a sub seven minute mile average on my 5k time, I'm like, I know I'm, I'm really fit in and in good shape for me. Um, and then, uh, you know, for you, you'll even set up things like maybe before a, a trip, like a, uh, a photo shoot, like you've done with Mike in the past mm-hmm. and things like that, mm-hmm. that, uh, give you like a thing to kind of train for compete and feel accomplishment when you're done. Mm-hmm. Um, but isn't banging your head against the wall where, you know, say it would be like some sort of competitive racing, you're getting older, maybe a little slower and you're just like you know, 
nursing injuries and running on the track and crying at the end. Yeah. And, you know, you like just don't fight your body so much. And yeah. I think, I think what's important is, in, you know, most of us, as we age, we take more on, on our plate, whether it's yeah. our career, having children, I mean, you don't have necessarily have children, but usually, you know, you're progressing in your career. You, um, have more relationships, you have more friendships, or you have <laughs> children and more responsibility and looking at like improving in that way also. So it's, it's not exactly linear in any one way, but overall you're able to handle more and you're living a more full life. And I think that's, um, that's not always sexy because you don't see one extreme in one area. And I think like, you know, social media will really portray like the most extreme as like the coolest, but the, most of the time, those people that have reached a super extreme level are a little tortured to get there. I mean, it's cool that they can do it, but they're torturing themselves a little bit to get there. It's withstanding a lot of pain that might not be a perfect balance when you're there. Mm -hmm. It's cool that you accomplishment accomplish that, but then how to come down off that if you've been at that high level without feeling a lot of sorrow um, and less than you were before uh, and just moving to that next chapter in life. Yeah. I think those, I think those times are important though for people. <clears throat> it, it shows you school. Everyone can relate to this. <clears throat> for me, just graduating college felt like that hard push and extreme, especially towards the end. I took like 20 credit hour semesters and things like that. And it was really hard. I was burnt. I didn't want to do it. And it was a really tough push to get that done. And I felt very accomplished. Do I want to go back and do that again? Do I want to go to grad school and things like that? I personally don't like I right. that's behind me, but I think with sports and competing, it's the same thing. Like you push towards this huge goal. Um, you know, it could be for someone at like a high end of CrossFit to make a, uh, now it used to be regionals. Now it's the semifinals, like put everything you've got into it. And that might be your apex. And that might be where you got and you punch that off. And, uh, you know, you got in there and, kind of trained through a torn meniscus and you're banged up and you're 32 years old and you finally hit that, that, you know, that peak. And, you know, you got in the middle of the pack, you might not like what the, I think where the problem lies is when people are like, you know, it took them nine years to get there. And then they're like, okay, I got to get it back together. And they're bandaging themselves up and crying through training sessions and ruining their relationships and doing all of that. That's where what we're talking about is like, that's a good time to start to pivot. And I think what it took me two years after I was not trying to compete at like a, at least like a regional level in CrossFit to like figure that out. Cause I was still training very explosively and trying to basically train like I was doing that. And I started getting hurt a lot and I and was like, pissed off. yep. And I was getting frustrated, <laughs> but my capacity to do that wasn't there anymore because I didn't have, you know, I was getting older, but a lot of it was, I didn't have the capacity to recover and focus the same way because we're getting married. We're starting a family. The gym business was five times the size it was, you know, three years before that. And I'm working more and I'm doing all these things to a different level. And it's like people, you only have this much capacity. So what I've done since then is I've set goals that are good for me with what I have going on. So I remember I took a, a year or two off doing the open. I had had some injuries and then, uh, I was like, okay, I want to get back to a good level and of, of doing this. I got in great shape and I was pretty much back to the level that I was at when I had competed, just everyone else had gotten a lot better, but I was really happy with was it. You 2018? know, 2018, 17, you know, 17 through, I did four opens in a row. Oh, right yes. There. Cause that's when I had my eyes. I was excited to do the open with you yeah. and then I wasn't allowed. Okay. Yeah. I, I got, yeah. I got in great shape. I felt good. You know, it's like in the 96th percentile, like whatever, it would be like a quarterfinal. And I did that for about four years in a row at that level. Felt really good about that. And then, um, you know, I had a little few tweaks and things and it was like, okay, I want to find something else that my body right now feels like it can compete in. And, um, got more into running and doing some stuff like that. And then this last year, um, boxing, which was, I think for me, even just right, it's right there at the level of like 
fulfillment and achievement that I felt with, uh, you know, actually going to the CrossFit games with the team for me personally, it like for anyone looking on the outside in, it's not that for me personally, this is a sport that I really love. And for me to get back to a level where I was training really hard, sparring with top level guys and go out and compete and beat a 28 year old kid who's an active fighter, um, in his home gym, um, made me feel like I, you know, conquered the world there for a little bit. And that was a huge, a huge thing for me. Mm -hmm. Um, and that was, I think it a really, and then I, after that was done, I, I let off the gas and I've needed some time to recover and like, you know, I'm back in CrossFit training classes and, and it's just finding these little mountains to climb that are achievable, um, and don't detract and completely take away from your life. Um, now for me to be like, okay, I won that fight. Now it's time to turn pro at 40 years old and get into all that. <laughs> and, um, that would be what we're talking about. Like, that's not going to fit the lifestyle. This gym is going to like go to shit real fast if I'm doing things like that. So it's like, okay, I did that. I left that there. I'm going to move on yeah. and, uh, feel good about that and then get back to life and find my balance again. Yeah. And I think, you know, it's really more about like, I, th I think discerning, like you were saying, when to push, when to pull back, when this is going to become an unhealthy obsession versus, Hey, I'm pushing to hit this goal. And, um, like you always say, most people need to push themselves more. Yeah. So I'd say 95% of the population, even at this gym, probably needs to push their comfort zones sure. more. Sign up for sign more. up for the open. Yeah, just put yourself out there. Yes, yeah. Compete in something. Yes, not put a ton of pressure on yourself, yeah. but participate. Try to be better and and break Find through those. Edge, yeah. yeah, break through those walls of fear. That's what and and that's what I really feel like is important about signing up for things and in, in doing these different challenges is breaking through those like walls of fears put in. And a lot of it is just putting yourself out there. Like, Hey, I'm doing this 5k, but I, you know, not taking yourself so seriously, you have to win the 5k. And I know there's differing um, schools of thought about like competing, but it, you know, I have a friend who was going to do a bodybuilding show and she's ripped <laughs> and, and I was trying to get her to do it. It's uh, Chelsea Rankin. And she had a coach that's like, Hey, no, you're not going to win yet. Don't do it. And I'm like, man, you know, why not, why not go do it? You look your personal You're best. You're 95% of the way there yeah, right now. Like yeah, like you, you can't, you can't dictate who shows up. So if you're always competing against yourself, then you can look at yourself and try to improve. But if your outcome with, with who shows up is going to dictate how you feel, to me, that's the wrong mindset because you could have like a former pro that just, um, I don't know, their card maybe has run out and they're allowed to compete in this competition and they just show up. You can't control that. Sure. But should you feel proud if, you know, a bunch of girls show up to do that bodybuilding competition that just aren't ready? Well, that, you know, it's like running a 5K with, uh, you know, uh, 30 people that have just completed their first 5K. I wouldn't feel good about beating them, you know? So it's, I, I think it's, it's- finding the appropriate yes, level of competition. yeah. yeah. Um, but I think for the most part, most people need to push themselves more. I think, you know, this is something I'm always talking to my clients, whether it's CrossFit or running a 5K or um, wh whatever interests you, push yourself to compete in it in some sort of way that's healthy for you, but scares you a little. Yep. And you got to meet yourself where you're at. So again, like I'll have clients that uh, have a hard time finishing a half mile run without stopping, but they'll sign up for a marathon. That makes zero sense to me. You know, that maybe in their lifetime would be good to do that, but meet yourself where you're at, run a decent 5K first, and then you can sign up for a 10K, then a half marathon, then a marathon. Yep. And, but what's cool about the Open is you can go in and you can scale it and you can compete at any level. And as long as you're competing against yourself every year, I mean, it's kind of hard to see that because if you're you're not doing RX, you can't really see exactly where you line up. But if you're like, okay, this is my first year. I don't have double unders. I don't have kipping pull-ups. Next year, I'd like to knock out like one of those skills and be able to do that and get stronger. That's a good, reasonable goal. Yep. And I, I see a lot of people not want to do it just because they think they're not going to do well. When if you participate, you're always going to level up. You're always going to work harder and you'll believe in yourself more just by showing up. Yep. 
Yeah, no, I think that's <clears throat> that's a great point. And, and to your point, I think most people don't put themselves out there enough. They don't compete in anything. I've actually seen in the sport of CrossFit, which can be frustrating, some of like the best and most talented athletes, they'll train really hard and uh, they'll never compete almost at all. Right. Um, and they'd be really good at it if they did. And they'd probably feel really good about it once they were done. It's, it's, the, um, it's that fear of putting yourself out there. Just knowing where you stack up. Yeah, it's tough. And I, I get it. Like I, you know, I'm, I'm a really competitive person and I want to win, you know, when I get out there and I want to do really well. Um, and sometimes I don't, you know, sometimes I'm like not happy and it's hard for me to frame it in my head that I did my best or I tried or, you know, when it doesn't, even when it just doesn't sort out and I, I went all out and it's just like the, the result wasn't what I wanted. Uh, but overwhelmingly, the reward is 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 much higher for actually putting myself out there and doing that. And I don't compete a lot. I'm not like a, uh, I'm not someone who does ten competitions a year. My goal every year is to compete in something at least once, and I typically do two or three times. But if I go a whole year and I don't compete in anything at all once, I don't put myself out there in any way. I feel like I lose not just a physical, but a mental edge a little bit when I don't, when I don't reach like a uh, kind of a mountaintop at one point in the year, I like to have that razor's edge for a little bit every year where I'm like, man, I'm tight. I'm in really good shape. I'm really focused. I feel like I can kick some ass right now and, and something physically like very well. Uh, that having that cadence almost every year feels really good. And it, and again, for, for you and I, and, and, and me, it's been something different oftentimes, mm -hmm. whether it was that pump and run. And I'm not great at that event. My bench press is, is, is a weak move for me. I'm a decent runner. My bench is not a great move. So I don't do, I don't stack up all that well in that, but it was like, you know, for, for me, you know, hitting 15, 16 reps at body weight is, is good for me. Um, and, uh, you well, now know, that I, you're 40, you don't, you can go back. To yeah. It. Yeah. <laughs> I'm good on it this year. Uh, but that, that I improved that movement for me. So that was, that was like, you that's get to a big bench one. less weight when you, when you hit 40. Yeah. Once you get into a different age group. Yeah. So guys go 90% of the weight, girls go 60% yep. instead of 70%. Yep. That's it. It's a big difference over like, cause you can max it out at 30 reps. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was like, I think even just five pounds, like benching, uh, 95, 30 times or 90, 30 times was a huge difference. Yeah. So, um, but I think, I mean, I think that's a good point. Um, in, in, you know, something like if we want to give you something tangible and this kind of piggybacks off of our last podcast, setting goals for the year, and this will be the first podcast of the new year, choose at least one thing to compete in this year, set a date, train for it. And then you just have to discern what type of person are you? Are you a type of person that tends to like not put themselves out there as much? Like maybe you would be, I tend to sign myself up for too much and always be like working on something where I don't have that downtime. I don't have that off switch. And I get a little burnout and I'll do, you know, many different various things and I don't take myself too seriously. So that's good. You know, if I'm middle of the pack or I'm proud of what I've done, I, I, um, am generally happy, but, um, I don't think that's healthy either. So I just, you almost have to find like what side of this you err on and push yourself to like either calm down, quit <laughs> signing up for so much or putting yourself out there, not taking yourself so seriously and, and discern that for you. But again, I think for the most part, most of us these days don't have enough conflict in our life, struggle, we kind of create our own for the most part, this internal battle where if you, you focus outside of you to train for something else, it helps, it helps you mentally, uh, in so many ways, not just getting out of your head by training for this, but then, um, also taking your body through that, um, stress response, almost like, uh, ice baths or whatever, like every week the open comes around, I'm going to be super nervous. I'm, I don't care if it's just like ball slams. I'm going to be nervous for it. And it's good for my body to go through that and learn how to 
deal with that as I do the workout come down off of that. And it's like giving your mind a, um, a test run of, of stress and it helps you handle other stress and in, in better ways. And I think the more you can do that um, in a healthy way, not doing it too much uh, can be very beneficial. I, I want to piggyback on that. I think that's a great point because life now <clears throat> in a lot of ways especially physically is very easy. You drive to work. A lot of people don't even have to drive to work anymore. They literally can roll out of bed, put a laptop up and, and, and start working, you know, in their heated homes or air conditioned homes. Life is physically a lot easier than it used to be. And you need some friction to grind against. And, and, and now we almost have to, that's what gyms are. You yeah. know, they, yeah. a hundred years ago, gyms didn't exist because it would seem counterproductive to, you know, physically working all day. Uh, So we have to create this friction literally with the gym that, you know, builds our muscles up, builds our bodies up. And a competition does all of that, you know, to a different level. And that's the way you break through plateaus. So anytime I compete in something, I'll typically feel... It's funny because I, uh, I'll even see it um, a lot with the open. There's two times people train really hard. Uh, the hardest training you'll see in here all year, it's right before the open, people trying to get ready for it. And then oftentimes it's the month after everyone trying to improve on, improve on what they did not do well on for the following year. But it's actually like, you know, they'll come out, they'll be training white hot after Burn that. Burn out. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then, and then, and then it's like the month after that you see it slow down. Um, Unlike college, when it was always like training for spring break. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Everyone drops twenty pounds in two weeks. In two weeks, trying to, <laughs> trying to, yeah, <laughs> exactly. But what that competition does is it, it usually shows you a different level or a different gear that you weren't used to, and and you know. Great example. I remember it was it was last year. It was Kiri had taken a couple years off. She went to firefighting and took a few years off competing. And you saw her get faster every week in the open into quarterfinals. And like she got so much better through just competing. It, it, it wasn't like the same, it wasn't the same progression level you would have seen out of her had she just been training in class. So it's like getting her mind back into that. Like yeah. she, she, she found yeah. different gears through each <clears throat> week. Like it was like, you know, she literally pushed as hard as she could week one, but her body physiologically, her mind physiologically couldn't push to that level. And then it pushed to another level week two. And then week three, then in quarterfinals, it just kept revving up to this mm-hmm. higher level. Mm-hmm. And that's what competing can really do for you. I remember, you know, in college when I would box or I'd have a fight, I'd come down from it and then I'd get back in the ring and, and, and be, and I was like, I was a little faster, a little better. And like, I was like, wow, that, that experience made me better. Like right away, I was like, I could notice like this jump in confidence and how I could move and everything. Mm-hmm. So competing really does it brings more out of you than just like checking the box that you did it. You'll actually see times come down because you find how hard you can push. You can find your edge and you're like, oh man, I was only going to 80% usually. I don't have to go to where I was at like when I was running through the open workout, but man, I can get to 90% of that when I work out and Mm -hmm. that's another 10% faster than you were going. Mm -hmm. So I think there's tons of benefits to Finding competitions, again, ones that are healthy for you to do, ones that, uh, you know, typically aren't going to, like, aggravate an injury. You know, there's different work that, you know, I'll I'll always talk about, like, I'll see people start to, you know, don't sign up for, if you you have a, a, a nasty, like, ankle injury or your foot's messed up, that's not the time right then to sign up for a running race. Like Mm -hmm. rectify that injury, make sure it's, it's strong, find a healthy competition. that's going to be something healthy for you. That's in the right competitive level. Sign up for one of those a year and you will see your fitness climb. You'll see your, um, 
I think you'll see also see your mood and just how you feel about yourself, your self-confidence go to a different level as well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was just thinking as you were talking, like, oh, now this is more like bigger picture, but um, this kind of just speaking, you know, to this and like competing in different areas and working on different areas of your life. I almost think about it like our, our son's in first grade. And almost um, everyone gets pulled out of the class at some point to work on something that their weakness is, whether it's reading. Um, our son has the most trouble with reading and writing, so he gets extra help with reading. But it's not a big deal. Like when we were growing up, like you knew the kids that left to get extra help with reading. But now, at least in Upper Arlington schools, it kind of seems like almost everyone gets pulled out for something. And I think if we can kind of imagine that in our life now as adults, but we have these like very broad subjects, we have like our physical fitness, our mental fitness, our social wellness, our spiritual wellness. And if we're always working on that weakest link and leveling up, it helps us level up as a whole. So where I'll see a lot of, you know, now to the extremes of those competitors, they'll be super fit. But then they they won't do much like socially, so they're letting their relationships lax and and, and fall back. And so that, that's always going to weigh on them because they're going to feel bad about that, even when they're working out or their career kind of like, you know, get lazy there, or, you know, not not bring that up to par. And that all affects you mentally, which will always affect you when you're competing. And if you're just always looking at like as an adult where, where am I falling behind a little? Let's work a little bit more in this area and just make these small adjustments. You do better as a whole. And, and then you're not ignoring anything. And then you're able to confront that pain mentally. And then you do the same thing in workouts. And a lot of workouts is just seriously being able to withstand what amount of pain. Mm-hmm. And you have a physical and a mental tolerance to that that adjust like you were saying like with Kiri like it, it adjusts and I remember coming back from each child thinking like okay I just have to get my mind and body used to like kind of hurting again because I would like kind of be physically uncomfortable but I wouldn't push workouts that I would just keep moving uh, I just didn't push much um and then getting back to it and and thinking I have to build up that tolerance and there's such a tolerance there um but it goes with all parts of your life and I I think that's where people will say oh Competing's not healthy. Well, it's not if you do it in this manner, right? And you let all of this go to crap. <laughs> but if you if you're always looking to try to keep some sort of balance, you're not going to be extreme in any one area. But unless you're a pro athlete, that's really not what your life's meant to be. Yep. And there's very few of us that are ever going to be pro athletes. But I just was thinking about that because I'm like, if we could all kind of view ourselves like, hey, we just need extra a little extra work in this area and always work on that lower level area it's um, you're, you're going to improve and be better. And that's really all of CrossFit is not having any weaknesses as well. So it's like you're not hiding behind like, OK, I'm horrible at all these skills. I just don't even want to do them. I'm going to do this <laughs> deadlift burpee workout, which I mean, that's something I, I struggle with is the skills. I'm going to confront whatever my weakness is and work on it. Like my weakness is my strength right now. I'm working on it. I know that I, I you know, try to confront that. Um, but you're always just bringing that out into the open and into the light and then you'll get better. Yeah. Fine and balance. I think that is a perfect place to leave this and we will catch you guys next week.